Classical dance, particularly Bharatanatyam, has been practiced professionally as well as academically from ancient times in Karnataka with its capital then located in the courts of Mysore. It is evident from Kannada literature, inscriptions and paintings. All the evidences point to there being a rich tradition of dance in Karnataka through the centuries till the present day. The Chalukyan sculptures of Badami and Aihol proclaimed the sculptures of Karnataka had a good knowledge of the Nati Shastra in the 5th century itself. Classical dancing was studied as a regular course at the great universities of Tahalakadu, Thalagunda and Bulgavi between the 4th and 13th centuries. Karnataka's royalty not only patronized the art form but also themselves danced like the great dancer queen Shantala of the Hoysala Empire. The Madanika Shilabalike sculptures of the famed Halabid and Belur temples were built during the Vijayanagar Empire. The Vijayanagar Empire boosted up all arts during its golden ages after the fall of the Vijayanagar Empire. The art of dance was nurtured by the Devdasis or temple dancers. Later on, in the erstwhile state of Mysore, came a resurgence of all art forms under the Wadiyar dynasty. It became a great seat of learning and patronage to all kinds of art and artists. Bharatanatyam in Karnataka reached its peak during this period. Kantivira Wadiyar organized a Bharatanatyam school in Sri Ranga Patnam, while Chikka Devaraja Wadiyar wrote two dance dramas, Geet Gopala and Sapto Padaki. During Krishna Raja Wadiyar's reign, a distinct style began to emerge, which is now known as the Mysore style. Krishna Raja Wadiyar, 1799 to 1868, was a scholar patron of the arts and contemporary of great trinity of Carnatic music, Muthuswami Dikshitar, Shyama Sastri, and Tyagaraja, and also of the Tanjore Quartet, consisting of the four brothers Punaya, Chinaya, Sivanandan, Vadivelu, who gave a margam format to the Bharatanatyam solo recital. Under his patronage, musicologists and dance experts migrated from several parts of South India to make Mysore an epicenter of music and dance. Their combined efforts to develop and refine the dance resulted in what came to be known as Mysore Bharatanatyam. Chamraj Indra Wadiyar, 1868 to 1901, who succeeded Krishna Rajendra, continued the patronage and brought Chinaya to his court where the latter not only composed several varanams and dilanas suited to dance but also influenced to a great extent the dance teachers and musicians of the court. His fondness for Javlis earned him the nickname Javli King. It was during his rule that Jatti Tayamma introduced the new technique Jararu. Hence, the indigenous tradition of dance took in other traditions to arrive at a continuous stream of dance art in Karnataka. In the past two centuries, the 19th and 20th, Mysore has produced many illustrious dance teachers like Mugura Suvanna, Amrit Appa, Das Appa, Bangalore Ket Appa, Gund Appa, Kolar Put Appa, and great dancers like Amrit Amma, Coimbatore Thai, Nagrat Amma, and incomparable Jatti Thai Amma, and her disciple, the great Venkata Lakshma. Alongside the palace dancer, the Asthana Vidoshis, existed the temple dancers or Devdasis like Rangamma and Jijamma, a veritable galaxy of dancers with high standards of technical excellence and profound scholarship. Krishna Raja Wadiyar, the fourth, 1901 to 1940, continued the dance rituals in the palace through the Devdasi system had been abolished in the temples. Though the Tenjo tradition and Kanchipuram traditions of Bharatanatyam had mingled with the local modes of dance, the Mysore school encompassing all these artists of the state had a distinct flavour of its own. The Jatti Tayama school excelled in Abhinaya with an exceptional observance of the Pura Vidhi. The performance used to be packed with shlokas, ashtapadis, padams 
and Javlis from Geet Govinda, Amuro Shataka, Neeti Shataka, Mukunda Mala and also many Kannada compositions of rare beauty. The Jatti Thayyamma school comprises of vast repertoire of Abhinaya. The Purvaranga Vidhi was elaborate and followed the rules laid down in the Nati Shastra. The dancers at the court stood behind the musicians before commencing the dance. They paid obeisance to their guru and musicians and then came around to start their performance. Along with being good singers, the dancer was also proficient in Sanskrit and Sahitya. She would sing a churnika in Raga Arabi in praise of Rangadi Devata, stage goddess, or Nati itself in other gatherings. After the churnika, a sabhavadana, salutation to the audience, or Sabhavandana Shloka and Natya Pramahansa Shloka from the play Malvika Kaganmitra of Kalidasa were regularly sung and a Pushpanjali Shloka came at the end of it. Then they danced a Ganapati Sabdam or other Sabdams instead of an Alla Ripu. As the Mysore dancers were influenced by the presence of Chinnaya, one of the brothers of famed Tanjore Quartet, they used to perform Jatiswarams, Sabdams, Varnams and Tilanas, which were similar to any Tanjore style dancer. The whole performance would be danced without any break. When it came to Abhinaya numbers, Geet Govinda, Shetragnya Padams, Javalis in Kannada and Telugu Shlokas of Amara, Krishnamagritram, Mukundamala, Bharatrahari, Neeti Shataka, all such poems by the Dasarakuta composers and vachanas of various poets, composers like Raja Vilasa used to be danced. Devarnam, Devarnamas, kritis of several well-known composers like Mutaya Bhagavata, Mysore Sadashiva Rao, Mysore Vasudevacharya were also added to the repertoire. It is here in the Abhinaya that the flavor of Mysore was very much evident. The dancers nearly always rendered a shloka before a padam, which came as a prelude in the same mood or a kanda padhya before a javali, when suggested in particular naika, mood of the heroine of the javali. The jaru aduvus, slide or rest steps, which embellished the javalis, were very peculiar and made the javali lively and crisp. Sitting and doing abhinaya was also very common, with the dancers themselves singing the lyrics. The sadhir of the Tanjore Quartet got assimilated into the already existing mode of dancing in Mysore as Chinnaya lived at the court of Mysore for a while. Therefore, most of the Bharatanatyam items performed were of the Tanjore Quartet. But the Abhinaya numbers showing the lyrical beauty of the great composers were different, innumerable and special, even in the Adavus. The lyrical beauty of movement can be seen. The Mysore Bani was known for flowery hand gestures using Alapadmas and Katakamukha more than geometrical and linear ones like Pataka and Tripataka. Historically, it was the king of Ganga dynasty who had won over Odisha in the 12th century. Jayadev lived in the court of Ganga King Lakshman Sena. Hence, the Mysore dancers rendered Ashtapadis and Shlokas of Geet Govinda much before anyone else did. There are a lot of similarities in hand gestures and movements between Mysore style of Abhinaya and Odissi Abhinaya. The three bhangi is also employed to enhance the beauty of rendering in the Mysore school. The Mysore Bani had less focus on Rita, hence Abhinaya was more developed. A great Abhinaya artist, she was daughter of Dasappa, a wrestler engaged in the palace during the time of Krishna Vadiyar. Apart from learning music, she learnt Nritta part of dance from Subrayappa and further training in Abhinaya from Astana Vidwana Kavishwar Garayappa. She learned Telugu Javlis and Padams from Chandra Shekhar Shastri and Kannada songs and Javlis from Kari Basappa Shastri known as Abhinava Kalidasa. She was appointed palace dancer at age of 15. As Thayyamma had a sound footing in Sanskrit, she drew largely from Amaru, Krishna Karnamritam and Geet Govinda and Kalidasa's work for Abhinaya. She introduced Churnika in dance, that is a prologue in Sanskrit, describing the achievements of Bharat Muni. She had a wealth of choice Javalis and Padams, both in Telugu and Kannada, and later she composed Javalis even while performing. During the time of Chamaraj Vadiyar, Thayyamma gave up dancing for a while, while she was justified with certain policies of the management. 
when Vadiyar held an assembly to judge the talents of his palace artists, Jatti Thayamma was invited, though she was no more a palace artist. She was given only half an hour to perform, but held the audience spellbound for three and a half hours. The king reinstated her in the palace and rewarded her richly. Thayamma learned from the Hindustani music from artists visiting the palaces and rendered thumris in Abhinaya to the accompaniment of Sarangi and Tabla. She is said to have performed them with a gungat in keeping with the North Indian style of dance. Tayama believed that Rasa Binaya was the soul of dance as the spirit of the art comes from the dancer's heart. So she laid more emphasis on Abhinaya. In 1945, Dr. Radha Krishnan conferred the title Nate Saraswati on her. Tayama passed away in 1947. Chandra Vadanamma was an excellent dancer and a favorite of Chamaraj Wadiyar. She learned dancing from a visiting artist from Tanjore and perfected her Abhinaya in Mysore. She had a rich repertoire of javelis in Telugu and Kannada, Padans of Shet Nagya, Jatiswarams, Telanas and Varnams, both Nati Varnams and Sangeeta Varnams. The Maharaja maintained her at the palace as she loved to listen to her music with beautiful renderings of Abhinaya. The dance teachers of her times would bring the disciples for approval prior to the appearance before the panel of judges at the palace as she was known for her frankness of opinion. Jati Taima's disciple K. Venkata Lakshma was the only court dancer of Mysore who did not belong to the Devdasi community. She belonged to the Lambani community. She was appointed as a court dancer of the Mysore court when she was only 22 years old and spent 30 years, 1939 to 1969, in that capacity. During that period, she participated in almost all the festivals along with illustrious dancers and musicians of those times who were invited to the court by the royal patrons. It was Veena Bakshi Subanna who recognized her merit and commended her as a worthy student of her renowned teacher Jatti Tayamma. Thus, Venkata Lakshma had the honor of becoming the Asthana Nartaki along with our four other dancers at the court of Raja Nalvadi Krishna Raja Vodiyar, the then ruler of Mysore. She had the privilege of dancing for the coronation and wedding ceremonies of Jaya Chamaraja Vodiyar, himself a great connoisseur, composer and patron of Samskrita, Sahitya and Sangeeta. Venkata Lakshma found a niche for the Mysore school of Bharatanatyam with the exquisite handling of Abhinaya. The nuances were enriched by her in-depth understanding of the musical and literary aspects of the compositions that she presented. In the Mysore style, she, the recital commenced with Purvaranga Vidhi, a customary invocatory number followed by Jatiswaram, Sabdam, Varnam, Padam. Venkata Lakshma's artistry had developed in a methodical process of learning of not only the prayoga aspects of the art, but also the essential sources like the study of Sanskrit, Sahitya and most important, vocal music from stalwarts of the times like Asthana Vidwana Devendrappa. She also underwent formal education up to class 8. Coming out of the palace in Vines in 1969, Venkatya Lakshma presented memorable performances, offered teaching programs and served in prestigious positions like the head of dance departments in the Faculty of Arts at the University of Mysore. Her students include M. Shakuntala, Dasappa Keshava and Esther Jaini, Lalita Srinivasan, Vidya Ravishankar, Aparna Sindur and Mala Shashikant. The Mysore Palace encouraged dance as did Baroda. These were royalties which had interest in dance and music and thus invited many great gurus from far and wide, especially South India. Guru Gundappa remains the architect of what is today hailed to be the Mysore Bani or style. He studied under his maternal uncle Kitappa, also called Kitanna, so as not to be confused with or mistaken for the Tanjore Kitappa Pillai Guru and his mother Jatti Thayamma was also dedicated as a Devdasi at the Parthasarthi temple Neelamangala. Today, Neelamangala is an industrial suburb of Bangalore. Gundappa Guru taught most of the dancers who danced at the palace and also on special occasions like the famous Dashera. The palace benefited by inputs of three dance gurus, 
Guru Gundappa, his uncle Ketappa, also called Ketanna, and Guru Putappa. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you.